it's a blessing to um, have the opportunity to come together in the name of our Messiah, the Most High. And I appreciate all of the kind words and words of encouragement that the people who join us on YouTube has been sending to me. And I want to start off today by saying that this is probably going to be a conference more than just a teaching and I don't know how much of I have pages of scriptures and information more scriptures than anything else that I would like to share um, the last teaching I did was on July 6th and it was about being surveilled and spiritual giants and um, I received two comments that has been very interesting and I actually spent a few hours praying and putting together this teaching as a result of those uh, well the first comment and after I got through doing the, the teaching about maybe a couple of hours after that I received uh, uh, the second comment that confirmed the teaching that I did was necessary so I was really grateful um, for those two comments and I'm going to share some of them with you. The first comment was from someone who sort of took offense to me saying that most of what is being taught <coughs> excuse me, today is, social go is a social gospel and it's not the gospel of salvation that Jesus Christ came to die and make available to people. And I know that there's a lot of scriptures that you can take and put together and make it be what <clears throat> anybody would want it to be. <coughs> Excuse me, because this, the Word of God is alive. And, um, and because you can do that, we have a lot of ministers of Satan that has hijacked the Bible or the Word of God and made it be what they wanted to be. And one of the points that I was trying to make in that last teaching was about a minister who was teaching about tithing and he was telling people that they need it in order to keep the devil from coming into their house because we are the house, we are the body of God, that they needed to do all of these various things in order to be right with God and to make sure that you don't get attacked by demons which in my opinion and my experience and my understanding of the scripture is that is not true because in the seventh chapter of Daniel it says in the end time that the enemy was going to um, wear out the saints of the Most High so whether you tithe or whether you go out and do all of these various things that I do feel based on my experience that what is being taught is a social gospel again and not the gospel of salvation and I'm saying this when I say my experience is because at one point I bought into all of that doctrine and teaching the word of faith movement the apostolic movement and all of these things that people are doing that really is not biblical and so let me share with you before I get into scriptures some of the things that I used to do and before I tell you about what I used to do, let me tell you now what I don't do. Is that I don't sell oil, I don't sell books, I don't sell tapes, I don't sell prayer cloth. Because when Paul was passing out the prayer cloth, he wasn't selling it, he was giving it because he had an anointing on him from God to heal people. Because that was the first century church they were given the power of authority and I'm not saying that miracles and, and, and the power of God has ceased working but we don't own those things those things are owned by God and he make them available as he will according to his plan his purposes and our, our knowledge as human beings and believers in Christ is limited so we could say we want to save somebody or we want to heal somebody and it might be not in connection with what God's plan is because when Jesus uh, called Lazarus out of the grave, he didn't go to the grave and say, everybody in the grave come up. He called him out by name because that was according to his will. 
when he healed the man who was blind, he said the, the people who knew that he was blind and that he was healed, they wanted to know who had sinned that the man was blind. And Jesus said, neither. This man was blind so that at the time I'm now Jesus walking or the Messiah walking on the earth, I'm going to heal him so that you can know that I am God here on earth. So people take scriptures out of context and make it into a doctrine that really is not right. So what I don't do is I don't ask for money, I don't sell anything, and I make a point not to talk about money. And I'm going to take you to a scripture where Paul is saying he understood that if you preach the gospel, you should be able to get taken care of by the gospel. But it was more important for people to understand that God is good and God is real and your soul be saved than for me to tell you you need to give me money. That is more important than I need to be able to rely on the Most High to take care of me anyway. He chooses to take care of me without me having a prostitute because the scripture even talks about people prostituting the Word of God. And we are not supposed to be concerned about building up a man or a lady's ministry but we're supposed to be building up souls and you have to start with your own household in order to be able to build up God's kingdom. We're supposed to be witnesses for the kingdom of righteousness. How we live, how we treat people, how we um, take care of our loved ones, all of those things is important. So I'm sure that what scriptures I'm able to share with you today is not going to be the aim of all of this. So now I'm going to tell you what we used to do. We used to, we, we've, we've paid to build at least nine houses. We've built wells in various countries. Um, out of all of the houses we've built in, in various parts of the world, only one of those houses in India was turned into a house church. And today, that church is, this, we, we've done, we did this maybe 10, 15 years ago. And maybe a year or so ago, those people who were connected to that man whose house we built came to visit our ministry, and that man is still conducting a church in his house. We have paid for deep wells in Africa. We used to walk around in the street praying and giving out gift cards for people to buy food. Um, we've bought cars for people. We've paid rent for people and we've given money to people who we later found out were frauds. You know, a lady came to us and told us her mother had died and she needed to get home to get to the funeral and we gave her money to get to her mother's and then about a year or so again she, um, passed. She tried to play the same scam on us. There was a man who came to us and said he needed medication to buy, he needed money to buy medication we found out that he was a scam. So we've, got, we've, we've done all of these things that I now, based on experience and what, what God has revealed to me, is a social gospel. Because Jesus Christ says in order to worship him, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. So let's get into scriptures now. Let's start off in Luke 4. And I pray that you will bear with me because I do have a lot to share. Um, and after I got through um, with the teaching and with doing this teaching, I'm going to read to you what came to me of the comment. And this person will know who she is. And the other person's comment I'm not going to post because the purpose of me sharing this information is not to hurt anybody or... Uh, make anybody offend anyone, but it's just to tell you what I understand, what I've experienced, because in Revelation it says we overcome by the word of our testimony and by, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, and we love our lives not unto death. So in order to have a testimony, you got to go through some a lot of testing, but this is my testimony based on what I've been going through and what the Holy Spirit has help me to understand. And the person whose comment I'm about to read, she got what I was saying, and this is her response to it, of her testimony of what she experienced 
embracing the social gospel. She said, my husband and I spent several years in a mega church. The scripture says we're supposed to know them who we labor among. And in mega churches, people don't know each other and they're not dealing with their sin issues. And I don't even agree with the doctrines of a lot of what they are teaching. But they are free to teach what they want to teach. And people are free to go where they want to go because God has given each one of us free will to do, accept him or not accept him and to let allow somebody else to teach you or you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. So she said, we used to, uh, my husband and I spent several years in a mega church. They were famous for their retreats. Men's, women, youth, married couples, etc., etc. Well, we spent so much money going to all these retreats and they never stopped. When one was over, another started. The women's retreat was well attended with persons coming from around the world, etc. We got to a point where we said no more retreats. So we stopped going and eventually started going to another church. Later we purchased a home with about an acre of land. I will always know because we stopped sinking our money into those retreats, we were able to purchase a home to accommodate our growing family. I watch your videos for the purity of truth. God gets all the glory. And that's what it really is about, giving God the glory. So retreats and going from one conference and going from one person's ministry to another person's ministry, looking for an anointing, that this person has a greater anointing because of the size of their church and going out knocking on people's doors and passing out food and all of the things that I'm telling I'm telling you this this is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ all right am i making sense so in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 this is this is Christ the Messiah speaking in verse 18 it says the spirit the ruach of the most high is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Most High. All of these are mostly spiritual issues. And let's turn to... 2 Corinthians to show you what the blind is. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. And please bear with me because I'm giving you scriptures today. And then and I do strongly encourage people to get into the word, to hide his word in your heart so we wouldn't sin against him. Don't take my word. Pray for the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you because that's what he's been given to us for, to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Okay? It says in chapter 4, Verse 3, it says, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world has blinded. So Christ came to bring sight to those who are blinded, the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I want you to drop down. Let's no, let's continue. It says, For we preach not ourselves. You see, we're not building up ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, the Most High, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Everything is for the Christ's sake. Everything we do, we should do it as unto the Lord. In Him we live, move, and have our being. It's not what you go out in the street and do. You be a witness and just abiding. Abiding means you fixed in Him. You live. You're not laboring. You're not. The scripture in Psalms 127 says, unless the Lord builds a house, and we're going to go there if time permits, we labor in vain. 
You're laboring in vain. You can't, we can't save anybody. No one can come to Jesus except that the Father draws. If the Holy Spirit is not drawing a person, they're not going to get saved by being part of a mega church and, and reciting some words after somebody tells you to recite the words because when you have been born again, you change. You, you, your mind, your heart changes. Your thoughts changes the word of God changes you. How you live, how you treat people changes. Let's read on. Verse 6 again. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. It's not about um, uh, even Jesus didn't go around building houses or um. I'm, I'm giving people clothes even though we're supposed to take care of the brethren. That's who, who the Bible is written to and I'm going to show you that too. It says verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen. We are the earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Then this is what it's going to look like to be a believer. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And let me share this at this moment, because if anybody knows what a persecution is, me and my family knows. I preach or taught the last teaching on July the 6th, and I shared that my mother-in-law had passed on July 3rd. We buried her on July 13, and we found my stepdaughter, who was 29, dead on the 15th, and she's not yet been buried. And I'm here trying to teach with a heavy heart because my grandson is being ab abused at three, and the authorities in our state is not paying any attention to us reporting that he's being hurt, tormented, sodomized, and abused, even though we've given authorities videotape of him telling us what is being done to him. And then my daughter has been assaulted, and she has a recording of the person who assaulted her, and that's the only proof other than a witness she would have to confirm that she was assaulted. And now she's being felony charged with recording somebody assaulting her. So if anybody knows what persecution and affliction is, it's me. So I'm teaching to you today from personal experience. Verse 10, we are always bearing about in the body and dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifested in our bodies. It's not about us getting rich. It's not about us naming it and claiming it. We have faith. We walk by faith in order to be, to be able to stand in the midst of persecutions, torments, and afflictions. For we which, have, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death works in us, but life in you, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us, raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Drop down to 18. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Things that we see are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Jesus Christ came to eternally reconnect us back to our Heavenly Father, our Creator. Am I making sense to you so far? Let's turn to the Gospel of John. 
the Gospel John, chapter 4. John, chapter 4. Thank you, Father. Look at verse 24, and this is Christ speaking. He said, God is a spirit. And I'm reading the scripture as it's written in the King James Bible. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In John chapter 1, it says, Jesus is the, no, I'm sorry, in John chapter 14, Jesus is the truth. The word is the truth. So in order to worship him, we worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, we worship him in Christ. All right. Let's turn to, I want to switch gears a little bit and then come back. Because I want to address faith without works is dead. So let's turn quickly to James. James chapter 2. Oh, I forgot when I was telling you all the things we were doing. We also supported for years financially an orphanage, an, an orphanage in Haiti. All of that's not biblical doctrine. I mean, it's nothing wrong with doing those things if, if the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, leads you to do a certain thing. But have it be part of what you have to do as ministry, to be a part of ministry is not true, okay? Because we are supposed to be concerned about the widows and the orphans. And James chapter, but part of the household of faith, okay? James chapter 2, and let's look at verse 14. It says, what does it profit my brethren? See, he's talking to the brethren. Though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? This is a question. And then now he's coming back and he's saying, if a brother or a sister be naked, a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, he's saying a brother or a sister, he didn't say the whole world because the scripture says, Jesus says, you always going to have the poor with you. But this is saying if a brother or a sister be naked, and destitute of daily food. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be you warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? You, if, you, if you have a brother or a sister and they tell you they don't have food or they don't have something to eat and you are able to help them and you don't, what kind of faith is that? That, that's, that's the kind of works, in this case, that this is talking about. You, you should care about your sisters and your brothers in the faith. Because we, you, your heart, you, you, you just can't have a heart for Christ and know that someone in your neighbor or your family or your brethren in the faith has a need and you don't try to help them if you can. You understand what I'm saying? But someone who's not saved, then you would need to be led by the Spirit of God when to give. You just don't go out and give like what is being taught to do. You have to be led by Christ. You don't just take what is for the household of faith and go and give it to anybody. Even, even the widow is saying in the church, if, if the widow has a nephew, let the nephew help the widow before the body of Christ helps the widow. We're supposed to be concerned for our household first. In Acts chapter 8, it says that we're supposed to first take care of those in Jerusalem, which means those in your household, those, those in your community. You got to take care of yours first. You we're going to go there, so I don't want to get ahead. Let me finish with this. And verse 15 again, it says, If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be you warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, which does it prosper, profit. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Let me give you 
um, the, the definition of, of works. It's um, in the strong concordance, it would be number 5647. And I have several of, the, of definition. One is called Avada, A-V-O-D-A, Avuda. It's pronounced Avuda. It's a Hebrew word. Literally means work, worship, and service. Work, worship, and service. Whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do, that you do in obedience. To me, the lady who sent me the comment telling me how she stopped going to the retreat and ended up being able to buy a house. That is a type of work that she didn't labor to do. She was led by the Holy Spirit. That's an example of how the, how the Lord is able to use us. Her comment confirmed my teaching. Do you understand what I'm saying? She didn't labor. Just the Holy Spirit or the Ruach touched her heart to give a comment. That's abiding. That's being led. You, we are the body of Christ. Our mouths should be used to bring edification or correction as the Holy Spirit leads. Our hands is head of embrace because we are the body of Christ. Christ is able to use us on earth as his representative. We are his ambassadors. Whatever he needs to get done on the earth, he's going to get it done through us being yielded available and obedient she was obedient to do a comment that she didn't understand she was just doing what the holy spirit led her to do at that moment when you're connected with christ you don't have to go out in the street and pass out tracks or do and i did that too i forgot i used to pass out tracks i used to leave them in grocery stores and everything but that's not the work he's the work and i'm gonna show you that is for us to believe because when we believe, we change. We get in the word. We obey what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. We are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And it's how you live every day. It's not what you do. It's, what, it's how you are, how you become. It's not a place you go to once or twice a week. You are the building. You are the body. You are the house of God. He lives in you. And he lives, God lives on earth in you to get done God's work from day to day when you are sensitive and yielded to his promptings and his telling you what to do. Am I making sense to you? This is what people don't understand. And the enemy don't want people to understand this because you should be able, if you are married, to take care of your family first. Family is first. We who are part of the body of Christ or the household of faith is a prototype of the, the family is a prototype of the body at large. And if you're not taking care of your family at home, the scripture says those who don't take care of their family is worse than an infidel. An infidel is one who does not have God. Am I making sense to you? So if you're busy going to a ministry and you got to be part of all of these different groups and all of these different classes and all these different retreats and all these different things and you got a full-time job and you got children and you got a fam you got a husband or a wife when are you going to have time to minister to them because they have to be ministered to first they have to be witnessed to first those are the first people who you're responsible for and if you're so busy going after helping a man or a woman build up their ministry, their legacy, for them to get rich, to leave to their families, when are you going to have time to put into your family? And when are you going to have time to get to know Christ for you? Because you're doing what somebody else is telling you to do. You're not doing what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. Am I making sense so far? Okay, so... Um, Works is a Buddha, and the 5647 says to serve, become a slave to Christ. 
not to a man or a woman telling you I need you to attend this class or I need you to teach this class or I need you to do this conference or this retreat and all and on and on and on because I told you before the Holy Spirit might tell you to give more than 10% to, to whoever he's telling you to give it to so me not giving 10% is not going to open me up to demon spirits What's going to open me up to demon spirits is either sin or the enemy is angry because I'm effective against what he's trying to do. There's so many different reasons. You can't just put it into into this category and everything is about this. This if, if it's if it's not this 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 then you know it's not it's not right. God is infinite and we are finite. And we never ever going to understand everything that's going on in this world. But our job is to get to know Christ and Him crucified. Am I making sense? All right. So I wanted to tell you what what um, works meant. Works is a type of worship and service to Christ. Okay. And let me let's go first quickly to First Timothy. I'm just going to read. I told you I had a lot of scriptures. 1 Timothy chapter 5. So what I'm saying, I'm going to show it to you in scripture. It says in verse 8 of chapter 5, If any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. I just quoted that scripture so I wanted to show it to you. And let's go to 1 John. So you know the address of the scriptures. 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. Let's look at verse 14. 1 John chapter 3, verse, starting at verse 14, it says, We know that we have passed from death unto life. That's what it's all about. We were dead spiritually, and we became alive when we believed. Because we love the brethren. It's about loving the brethren in the faith. He that loves not his brother abides and death. Whosoever hid his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life. See, it's about eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Not for the world, but for the brethren. Whosoever has this world's good and sees his brother have need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him how dwells the love of God in him. It's about the brethren. We are supposed to be witnesses to the world. How we live, we're the light, we're the salt. And I'm not saying that the Ruach or the Holy Spirit will never lead you to give to those outside of the household of faith. But it might be, say, somebody who the Holy Spirit is drawing into the kingdom and they need to know that God is real. It's not just you arbitrarily going out doing it. It's being led by the Spirit of, 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 the, of the Most High. Am I making sense to you? All right, let's continue on. I have a scripture in 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, let's go there. I'm all over the place because I'm, I'm always eclectic. But... 1 Peter chapter 2. Some of these scriptures just, this teaching blessed me at a time when I needed encouragement for myself because of all the things that's coming against us. 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's start at verse 5. It says, You also as lively or living Stones. God is building up his spiritual house with people who are his living stones. Okay? And he's doing it. Unless he builds the house, 
you're laboring in vain. It says, uh, built up a spiritual, see, he's building up a spiritual house. Sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus, I'm sorry, spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual, spiritual sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, not financial, not natural, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Most High by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, pres elect precious, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded or confused. Do you see it? Okay. Please bear with me because I want to. Okay, so let's go to um, Mark. Mark. Excuse me. Mark chapter 3. Verse 34. Excuse me. It says, and he looked around about on them. Let's let's actually let's start at 32. It says, and the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. Now they were talking about his biological mother and brother. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked around about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brother, brethren. For whosoever shall do the will, not do your will or man or lady's will, but do the will of the Most High, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. It's the one who does what He's led by the Spirit of God to do. Okay? Let's turn to Luke chapter 10. You have to get it right. You can't. It's got to be only what God tells you to do is profitable. Luke chapter 10. This is one, this is really an awesome one to me. And this is what most people are doing. Let's look at chapter 10, verse, start at verse 38. It says, Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word but Martha this is what most people are causing people to do in the churches but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said Lord does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone bid her therefore that she help me. I'm busy in the kitchen. I'm, I'm cooking. I'm, I'm doing all of these things. I'm, I'm going to these people's houses. I'm going to this place. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm going to this retreat. I'm going to this conference. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Her good part was sitting at the feet of the Savior, listening to his word. And he told her, Martha, you are busy with all of these things. But the, the thing that's most important and is needful 
Mary has found it and chosen it. And I'm not going to help you take it away from her. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. This is what we don't take the time to do. We don't take the time to hear how the Ruach wants to lead us. We don't take the time to allow the word of God to wash us, to cleanse us. We've been programmed and conditioned and trained. The scriptures have been twisted to make us serve a ministry or a man or a organization and not serve the Most High and His Son because He came to give us eternal life. He came to make us alive spiritually, not to make us rich. But some of us are more blessed than others and we're supposed to be concerned about those who are less blessed than we are. But that's part of the household of faith. Let me just quickly go, like, I, I think I missed Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I can just go on and on with this. Because it's a really, this is the reason why I had chosen not to respond to the person's comment. Because as I prayed and thought about it, it would have taken me too long to write this comment. And I thought it would be more prudent to do a teaching rather than to um, try to sit and respond to her. Ephesians chapter 2. And let's look at verse 11. It says, Wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. And I, this is a whole nother teaching altogether, but I wanted to say that at some point, everybody, even the children, even the Hebrews, before Abraham was called, was a Gentile in the flesh. It was in the flesh, but, but the Father is doing something different. He's, he's trying to bring us back to a place where we, are spirit, we, we understand that we are spiritual beings, and in order to have communion with the Father, the Creator, we have to be made alive again spiritually. So he's saying in verse 11, Wherefore remember that you being in the time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, your heart was uncircumcised by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hand. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ, it's in Christ, it's in the Messiah, you who sometimes were far off are made near by the blood of Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, the Misha, Misha. I always have a hard time saying um, that word when I'm just spontaneously saying it, but you know I'm talking about the Messiah. You, you understand what I'm saying? The, this is telling you He's not about the flesh. He's about your spirit being made alive. Let's go to one more. Matthew 26. I hope by the power of Almighty Most High and His Ruach that this sets some people free because people are being placed under a burden and under bondage to feel as though um, God is not pleased with me or He's not satisfied because I didn't... I mean, there's some um, ministries or um, organizations where you have to knock on a certain amount of houses a year in order to be acceptable by God. I think that's the Jehovah Witnesses. And also the Mormons. The Mormons send their children out when they're 16 and 17 year old in different states and different places because they got to go knock on so many doors in order to be acceptable. And the Protestants is doing it too. Like the man who I told you was saying, you got to become part of this. And he said, this ministry. And you got to join this group and that group. And then if you join this group and that group, and he was just naming off the different groups in his ministry that people had to join or become a part of to keep the demons away. That puts a bond, that's put people in bondage. And it puts a burden, I mean, we got enough fighting from the enemy without 
being going to a church where you got to go to this conference or you got to go to this retreat. And if you miss out on this, then guilt is, 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 is placed on you because you, you weren't there. You didn't do what you, you needed to do for this ministry, to support this ministry. It's not about supporting a ministry. It's about supporting Christ's agenda, Christ's agenda. Am I making sense to you? Matthew 26. Let's look at verse 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman, a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. She was being led to do something. Nobody didn't tell her to do this. The Spirit was leading her to do it. Okay? But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? See? They saw what she was doing as a waste. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. So, the, his disciples thought just like people are thinking today, you, you got to go deal with the poor. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay, and here's what Jesus says. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. See, God might be telling you to do something that he's not telling the next person to do. It. And it doesn't mean that what she's doing is wrong or because he didn't tell you to do it that you not doing it is wrong. That's why we need to be led by the Spirit of God to do and be obedient to what he tells each one of his living stones to do. All right, remember in 1 Corinthians 12, everybody got a different thing to do. But it all is working together according to how the Holy Spirit is leading them to do it. It says, for you have, for you have the poor always with you, but you have not. But, you, but me, you have not always. The poor is always going to be with us. We can't alleviate that because we got so much evil in the world. But what was important was that this lady with the alabaster box was preparing him for his burial. But the other people around him didn't know. And she probably didn't know either that she was doing the work of God the way for, for how big it was, whatever it was that she was doing. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Truly I say unto you, whosoever this, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman has done be told for a memorial of her. I just feel the anointing, the power of, of Almighty because this is what being a believer in Christ is all about, is waiting until the Holy Spirit tell you to do X, Y, or Z. And because she did what no man told her to do, 2,000 years, we still talking about what she did. Do you understand? Before we started the recording, we were in Ecclesiastes 1. And we were talking about how generations will come and generations will pass. But the earth will always abide. So what I'm doing here today, I have no knowledge of how long this world is going to last and how the Most High is going to use this. But I'm giving him my best, as I understand he's leading me to do. And that lady's comment that I read about the retreat is proof that I'm doing what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do. Because I said it's important to take care of your family. One lady took offense or exception to that. And because I said about the social gospel. And another lady is saying... I was in bondage to this. So I'm confirming to her that taking care of her family would be something that is more pleasing to the Most High than for us going standing on a street corner talking to some strangers who's not going to even at this point in the, in the history where we are is not even going to be interested in what you have to say because only the spirit of the living 
Most High Father, Creator God, can draw a person into his kingdom. Am I making sense to you? All right. I hope you're not on tilt yet because I have several other scriptures I really want to give. This one in John. Okay, let me let me take you here. John chapter 6, because this is really important with the James um, scripture. John chapter 6. Thank you, Father. Gospel of God. John chapter 6. Gospel John chapter 6. The Gospel John chapter 6. Just to confirm what I'm saying to you. Verse 28 it says, Then said they, I talk, they were talking to Christ, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. This is the work. You believe in. Because when you believe, then you make yourself available. Your heart desires to be obedient. Because you have that connection with him. Just like the lady with the alabaster. And I want to... Um, um, I'm going to have to probably end this. Because I could just continue to go on and on and on. Um, but I want to take you to Mark talking about the tithing Another, um, I didn't read to you the um, person's comment um, the first part of her comment was, was, was nice it was a blessing I'm going to read the whole paragraph of the lady who took exception she said Mrs. Mona I thank you you are a wonderful Hebrew woman as an example to the other females who have zero clue out here. I tell women who need advice from a woman to listen to you all of the time. I have been following you since you had 110 subscribers on various accounts and have always looked forward to your weekly message. And I really do appreciate, humbly appreciate you following me and listening to what the father says to me but she says but I almost gave a negative one because you forgot James 2 at, at, the, at the 27 mark of the video so I wanted to come back to clarify when I say social gospel what I'm talking about because she says true social gospel at least what I preach because she's a preacher and not what you're talking about is based upon James 2 you can have all the faith and spiritual insight in the world, but if it's not backed up by social works, your faith is dead. You know better. Please don't sound like these false Christian conservative hillbillies and these pork-eating synagogues or these modern Pharisees and Sadducees who wouldn't give you $2 if your car, purse, and phone got stolen and you needed to take a bus home who, who dominates the Hebrew movement out there, out here. Both groups are agents of the enemy and are targeted by the agents of the enemy. And then by the way, she gave me James too. She says, this true social gospel is the Lord's busyness. True social gospel is the Lord's busyness or business and there's no way if you are doing the Lord's real business you are too busy for other things no possible way the Lord's business is and will always be more important than your earthly family I think that God's family to me is a gift uh, since from March until now I've lost five members of my family. 
So I do think family is important. And I think it's really important to teach your family about the Most High. And she went on to say how people don't give. But I'm going to end it here. I just want to say, I think, I think our Heavenly Father is so infinitely wise. And He's so good. And in, in the 15th chapter, I believe it is, of Genesis, the Lord said that He picked Abraham because He knew that Abraham would tell his family about the Most High. That's our responsibility. If you don't start with your family, and you're more concerned about the people out in the street than you are about those who God, when they come through you, it's a gift. Your spiritual family is a gift. And your spiritual family is more important than your biological family, but you still have to be concerned about your biological family. And if, if, if the Most High is not calling them through what you are able to share with them, you, you can't make them get saved. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't make them want Christ. And you're not supposed to try to do that. But your job as a witness, and I had the scripture to say that, that we're supposed to be his witnesses. We, we, we are his body. We are his witness. How we love our families. How we love our spiritual family. How we love our biological family is us being a witness. And is us doing his work. Because we believe him. That's what the scripture says in John. The work that we are supposed to do is to believe on him and allow him to lead us. Not people, but I'm, I'm, I'm re-emphasizing this because I think it's so important to know from day to day that what you do is him leading you to do it. And what you're doing it, you're doing it as unto the Most High. You're not doing it to bring glory or honor to a man or a woman. I, I, I mean, I, this, is, this is strong in me because I knew of a, some people who used to be part of our ministry. The, the, the son was part of our ministry and his mother was part of a church where the people, the, the pastor was married. And the ladies in the church used to take the pastor's shoes off and massage his feet with him having a wife right there. That's so inappropriate. But these are the things that people are teaching people that they have to worship the man or lady of God instead of worshiping the Most High and His Son. And that's what I'm trying to, to debunk, so to speak. I'm, I'm saying we're not supposed to serve people. We're supposed to serve Christ and how He lead us to do what He leads us to do for people in service of Christ first. But what is being taught, and I'm going to say it again, is a social gospel. It's not the spiritual gospel that Jesus Christ died to make available for people to have eternal life and be made alive spiritually again. Okay? All right. So if I, if I